Hey guys, Prangle Gaming here, and welcome back to the Millwall Career Mode. It's now episode 2, and in today's episode, we're going to be playing all three of the European International Cup group stage games. Now, if we manage to finish in the top two, we do progress into the semi finals, which you would see in the next game. Now, before I sim towards the first game in this group stage game, I might be getting some emails requiring some of the prices, and hopefully, I will be able to get some of these players and their prices won't be so ridiculous because of course I've got a very small budget and I really hope that some of these prices will be more than achievable. So let's sim to this first game and see what the prices are for some of these players. Well that's you. Right, so it didn't actually take that long to get some emails back. So we have Christian Walton which is 1.3 million. We then have Kelly Roos which is 400k. Jonathan Bond has only just joined Reading, so unfortunately we cannot get him this season. James Tokowski, 2 million. Unfortunately, that's out of my price range, so I'm hoping that we can get him for a little bit cheaper. Then Ethan Ebanks Landles, 850k. And then Declan John is 1.3 million. Now I'm hoping some of these players I might be able to get for a cheaper price because a lot of them prices are testing the limit of my budget. So let's move on and see if we can get any more emails requiring prices of players. Right, so it only took a day to get some more prices. So we got Simon Moore, 600k. We then got Mitch Hancock, 550k. Miles Kenlock, 240k. Connor Townsend, 350k. Jeremy Helan, 725k. Aaron Tushpola, 400k. And then that's it so far. But if we progress another day, I'm sure we get some more prices. Right, so it only took another day to get the prices of some more players. So Cole kept Kawa. His price is 210k. Now Daniel Johnson. Oh, I thought this was going to be the problem. I knew he'd only just joined Preston. So unfortunately, we cannot get him this season. What about Michael Doherty? So he's 325k. Then Joe Rouse, 425k. Then Dominic Samuel, 425k. Now we do have a few more players' prices to get back. When I have all of them, I'll bring you up to date with what we're looking at. Right, so actually before we get into our first game, we've got two more emails. So we've got Viv Solomon Otabor, which is 325k. And then we've got Mason Bennett, which is 525k. So that gives us an option to have a look at two of them players. Right, so now we're going to get into the game. I'm going to be using my cut team, and hopefully we can get a win in this game. So, let's go. Right, before I get into the game, let me quickly go over who's in the team and why I'm on professional. So, of course, we've got Archer in goal. Left back is the captain, Tony Craig. The two centre-backs are Nelson and Webster. Right back is Cummins. Left mid is O'Brien. The two centre midfielders are Thompson and Powell. The right midfielder is Cohen Hall. And the two strikers are Alfie Pavey and Marquis. Now, I am using this cup team as I think it'll be useful to use the backup team just to see how they get on in this European International Cup first game. Now, I'm using professional because I haven't quite got to grips with world class yet. And if I do start winning every single game that I play on Professional, then I will bump it up to World Class to make it more realistic. Because, of course, you don't win every single game. You do lose games and draw games. And I want to make it as realistic as possible. But, of course, I do want to get that title. So, without further ado, let's play our first match. And hopefully, we can get a win. John Marquis, what can he do here? He's still going with the ball. John Marquis is still dribbling past the defenders. Can he cut inside and score a goal here? It's John Marquis! Marquez with the strike, and it's a great goal by John Marquez. He scored the first goal for Millwall this season. And by God, it was a good goal. Paris Cohen Hall to take the free kick. Paris Cohen Hall, and there you go, we've scored. We're winning 2 0. That was an absolutely beautiful free kick there. And we actually get an achievement because it's the first free kick I've scored. But that was an absolute beauty of a goal. And I'm glad to say that Paris scored that there. Pavey to John Marquis. It's John Marquis and there you go, he scored. It's his second goal in this game and he's made it 3-0. And it was a great hold-up play by Alfie Pavey and then he played him through with a great through ball and there was no way John Marquis was going to miss that. And that's his second goal of the season. Okay. 
And there you go, Steve Morrison has put it in the back of the net there. And he's made it 4-0. Right, so of course this was a goal. Pavey played it through to Steve Morrison. And there was no way a great striker like Morrison is going to miss that. It was an absolutely fantastic goal. And the goalkeeper De Winter could do absolutely nothing about that. And now we're winning, of course, 4-0. Right, it now is full time. I did win 4 0. And I've got to say, maybe I might have to up the difficulty to world class because I absolutely dominated them there. And I did score my first ever free kick. Now, we had 13 shots, 7 on target. And of course, the com is going to dominate the possession because that's what the com does now in this game. So, let's get into the second game and hopefully we can get a second win. Right, before we get into the next game, let's just quickly have a look at this Mitchell Lund. Now, he's a right back, he's 18 years old, and he plays for Doncaster. Now, he's been loan listed by Doncaster. Now, I was looking at his rating on Footwiz, it isn't fantastic, he's a 53 rated right back. Now, I was just thinking that because he's got a decent potential growth and we could have him on a two year loan, would it be worth it? Because Carlos Edwards is coming towards the end of his career and it could be decent to have that right back there who can just be used when necessary because of course Sean Cummins probably is going to be the main right back there's probably going to be no doubt about that but with Romeo being probably a third right back we could have a London as the second right back and then at least we've got some options because if you think about it yeah we do have Romeo but it'd be decent just to have another one there for two years as well so that's not even that bad so I'm actually going to submit the offer and hopefully they'll come back and accept it. I know he's not fantastic, but it'll be worthwhile just keeping him here and using him every now and then. Right, before we get into the game against Obrio, which we actually are away from home in this game, I'll be using the reserve squad. Now I have upped it to world class because of the game that I played last, because it was actually quite easy. So I want to have myself have a really big challenge. Now, what's the biggest challenge here? Well, I can use the reserve team on an even higher difficulty. Right, so in goal, we got King. At left back, we got the captain, Tony Craig. The two centre-backs are Parr and Wood. Now, Parr did make an appearance in the last game, but unfortunately, didn't really do anything. We then have Romeo, because he asked so nicely to play. And then we have O'Brien, Powell, Thompson, and Cohen Hall, who are all from the midfield in the last game, and they are playing yet again. Now up front we have Pavey and Marquis. Now Marquis had an absolutely stunning game. So I'm hoping that him and Pavey can score some more goals and improve their partnership. Now Pavey does look a little bit tired so I might have to sub him off at half time. But we're across that problem when it comes. So let's get into the game and hopefully we can get another three points in this group. Keenan Wood needs to try and get back and stop anything from happening here. He's still going. It's a great chance. And he's turned it into the back of the net. It was an easy finish for the striker there. And King could do absolutely nothing about it. And we're losing 1-0. So here's the goal again. He absolutely blitzed past the defender there. And then when the ball came in, there was nothing any defender could have done there. That was an absolutely beautiful strike. And defence, well, they could have done better. But the goalkeeper was never going to save that, let's be honest. And it's now 1-0 to Obrio. Oh, the ball's been played across to him there. And they've scored to make it 2-0. This is so unfortunate. They have just absolutely dominated us since the second half has started. And I have no words. My defenders turned to jelly here. And it was an easy pass. And there was nothing the goalkeeper could have done there. It was too easy for the attacking player. John Marquis, Powell, Lee Gregory's got the ball, Gregory with the strike and that's an amazing goal by Lee Gregory, I don't know how that went in the back of the net but that was astonishing, the goalkeeper really should have saved that, I'm not going to complain there, that was a fantastic goal, it was a great passing play and I'm actually surprised he got the opportunity to score there and that is a proper striker's finish, that's how you do it. Can we get back into this game? I hope so. Right, of course, the game has finished 2-1. Unfortunately, I couldn't get back in this game and actually equalise the game. That's really frustrating. 
because the comp passed it around the back. That's ridiculous. That's the sort of thing that people do when you're playing ultimate team and they're trying to protect a lead. I don't like it. I think it's stupid, but it's the way that the comp plays. I'm going to have to get used to it. So let's have a look at the stats here quickly. We both had seven shots. They had four on target. I had six. And of course, they're going to dominate in possession. They're the comp. What can you do? Unfortunately, Gregory did score one of the goals that we scored, but unfortunately we couldn't get yet another. And I've got to say that Gregory goal should have been two in itself because that was a fantastic strike. So let's just get into the second game and hopefully, just hopefully, we can stay and battle in the next game and then progress into the semi-finals. So let's go play that match. Right, so before we go into the final game of the episode, we've actually trained up Alfie Pavey, uh, Young striker, he's actually gone up to a 55 rated striker now, so he's got a D in headers and volleys. He then got a C in through balls, basic free kicks and dribble gloss, and he got an A in chip shots. So now that he's gone up a rating, and I mean he's even better and can be even more used in the team. So let's progress to the game's day, and if we get any emails, I'll show you them if they're important. If not, then we just go and play the final game, and hopefully we can get a win or even a draw, and then we should be able to get into the semi-finals of the European International Cup. Let's go. Right, so this is the team. It's actually the starting 11 apart from David Ford in goal. So we got Archer in goal because Ford is out injured. Then we got Martin at left back. The two centre backs are Beavers and Tony Craig, the captain. At right back, Carlos Edwards, left mid, Lee Martin. The two centre midfielders are Upson and Williams. The right midfielder is Fred. And the two strikers are Morrison and Gregory. And Gregory did score that amazing goal in the last game. Now, I've got to say, their kit is fantastic. It's an orange kit. And I cannot wait to play them. Hopefully, beat them. And, of course, it is on. World class. So, hopefully, we can win this game. Let's go. Beavers. Tried to play it to Tony Craig, and it didn't work. It's now a par there. He's played it across. And they put it into the back of the net. It's now 1-0. I really hate sweaty goals going in the back of the net against me. And unfortunately, I fall into yet another one of those. So let's have a look at the goal again here. Unfortunately, my defense is completely asleep. And there's no way Archer was ever going to save that. Gregory. To Steve Morrison. Steve Morrison is going to try and cut inside. He gets brought down there. Is it a penalty? Yes, it is. And that could be a lifeline for us. And hopefully we can score it here. So this is actually what happened here. You don't slide in there. And unfortunately for him, Morrison was in the right place at the right time. And we do get that penalty. It's Sean Williams versus Paino. Can Williams convert here? Yes, he can. He's equalised the game. This is so important if we are to progress into the semi-finals. So let's have a look at this again. It wasn't the best of penalties, but there was no way that the goalkeeper even anticipated that. And I'm glad to say we have equalised this game. Upson, over the top for Steve Morrison. What can Morrison do here? He's going to try and cut inside. He's still going with the ball. It's Steve Morrison. And he's actually scored to make it 2-1. We're actually winning this game. This is so important. And at the moment, this is really, really crucial. And I would have been really annoyed if Steve Morrison had missed that. But I've seen chances like that not even go close to the goal. So I'm quite glad it actually went in the back of the net. And we're beating this team. And hopefully, that would mean that we may be able to win the group here. Mark is going to cross the ball into the area. Oh, and that's dreadful. It's actually gone in the back of the net. My defenders didn't pick up that header there. And this is devastating. We could have actually won this game. And unfortunately, our defense just wasn't good enough. Let's have a look at the goal again here. So the player crosses it into the box. And you can see right there, the defender makes the wrong run. And that's how the striker, or the attacking player, should I say, gets that easy free header and manages to put it in the back of the net. Morrison to Shane Ferguson. What can Shane Ferguson do here? He's still going. Shane Ferguson, he's still going with the ball. Ferguson with a strike. He's dropped to Steve Morrison. Oh, and he managed to put it in the back of the net, and we're winning 3-2. This is a dream, and we do manage to win this game. What a poacher's goal by Steve Morrison here. You see, Shane Ferguson was running on the ball, 
It's a great block. And then, of course, Steve Morrison is going to turn that ball into the back of the net. And we got absolutely dominated in possession. But all I can say is that's expected when the con plays like Barcelona, passing it around all the time. They then had 11 shots, 6 on target. Well, that's irrelevant. We won the game. That's all we needed to do. And we've done it. And we do progress into the semi-finals, the European International Cup. So did we win the group? Well, let's go and find out. Right, and there you go. There's the group standings. Unfortunately, we did finish second. But that's irrelevant. We managed to go through. And yes, we did lose to Obrio. And that did mean that they went on to win the group. But it was only by a point. And I'm quite glad to say we won two of them games and only lost one of them. So who do we have to play? Well, let's go find out. Right, it looks like we're playing Royal Muscaron in the semi-finals of the European International Cup. Now, I'll leave that game for the next episode. So anyway, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And don't forget to stay tuned for the next episode of this series. Goodbye.